I struggled with self-worth issues for most of my life. During that time, I also suffered from two bouts of depression. Then I transformed my life completely. Along the way, I learned valuable lessons. I'm about to share with you the most life-changing learning I've had from the past 12 years of relentless determination to create the life I always wanted. But first, what led me to learning what I'm going to share with you is as important as the learning itself. A journey of personal growth that I could not have imagined began when I started practicing NLP. Neurolinguistic programming gave me the tools to finally find my way. It's been too good to keep to myself, which is why I teach it. If you're curious about learning NLP, I will show you a way to learn it and master it, and you won't have to pay thousands of dollars to do it. More on that later. What I will reveal to you in this short video will lay to rest all your worries about not being good enough and not living up to your potential. It will also reveal why your successes and accomplishments never feel good enough. Most people go their whole lives without ever understanding this. When you get it, you will be among the top half of 1% of the population. You will also free yourself to finally create the life you want. Most of us are chasing something. It might be specific like a goal. It could be an adventure like traveling the world. It could be money, a car, a house, a spouse, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. In other words, we want things. And we think that when we have those things that they will make us feel good, especially about ourselves. This is in fact the process we follow. We want something, we go and we get it, and we experience the good feeling that we were expecting, right? But do we really? Too often, it doesn't work that way, does it? We also want something that will last longer than just brief gratification. How many times have you accomplished something or bought something that you really wanted? How long did the pleasure last? Did you feel empty once the immediate gratification wore off? What happens is that people end up spending their entire lives in pursuit. That's great if you're doing it for the love of the adventure, but that's not why most people are doing it. They're doing it because it feels like their life depends on it. You're doing it because you feel like you lack something and you believe that something out there in the world can fulfill that lack you feel deep within. What I'm getting at is you're actually pursuing completeness, but how you're pursuing it will never complete you. This is the first crucial understanding. You want something for the feeling, not not the thing or the achievement. That achievement or that object of your desire is only a means for you to experience what it is you want to feel. But you cannot find that feeling in the object or the experience. Material possessions and achievements do not have inherent value. It doesn't matter how hard you've worked for them, they don't contain value. For example, a beautiful car sells for $200,000. That might make it seem valuable. Obviously, there are enough people who want that car and are willing and able to buy it. Otherwise, the price would be lower or such cars wouldn't even exist. But there are very wealthy people who would never buy it, even though they could afford it. Not everyone wants it. Some people value it and some people don't. What does this mean? It means that the car does not possess value. It's not valuable on its own, nor by its nature. So we can't say that objects and experiences have inherent value. To say that they do would mean that they generate their own value. If that were true, we would all want the same things to the exact same extent, but we know that's not true. Some people want a big house, some people couldn't care less. Some people want to travel the world. Other people would rather read about traveling the world or it doesn't even interest them in the least. When I explain this to people, they don't have a hard time understanding it, but people have a hard time accepting it. To accept it means your life will change. It's what you want and it's also what scares you. Not everyone is ready for that. Most people think they want to change their life until they realize what has to change first. Most people want the world to change for them. They expect the world to give them what they want. Many personal development gurus even teach this, but this type of thinking will stagnate your progress. I'll come back to this. Some people like to push back on what I'm saying using counterexamples. They like to say, uh -huh. I gotcha. What about money? Money has inherent value. Money even has the value printed on it. Doesn't money contain its own value because it says so on the money itself? Money is useful at stores and banks. You can transfer its value into other currencies. It's true that there are numbers printed on money, but the value of it fluctuates. Arriving at the value requires subjective agreement. So there is no objective measure of the value of a currency. So it has no inherent value. You can demonstrate this easily. Take a $100 bill and put it in front of a homeless person and a billionaire. Does that money actually have the same value to each one of those people? 
Of course not. That $100 could feed a homeless person for at least a week. For the billionaire, it wouldn't even be worth his or her time to even pick it up. Bring a million dollars in cash to an uncivilized tribe in South America and see how much they value it. So nothing you want has inherent value. The achievements and goals you dream about, the material possessions you long for, only have the value that you're projecting onto them. Why is it important to understand this? Will it change your life for the better? Let's find out. When you understand that everything you want and value is a projection coming from you, you discover something new. If nothing has inherent value, then what is the source of the value you see in the world around you? Before I tell you, I'll give you a hint. Think about chasing a goal or a material possession that you want to own. When you think about it, do you believe that it will give you something that you don't already have? Most people do. To do this, you have to overlook something. You have to overlook the source of the value. But the source of the value is already here. It always was, because it's you. You are the source of the value. Accomplishments and material possessions have only the value you project onto them. When you overlook this obvious fact, you are defeating yourself. You are deluding yourself into a feeling of incompleteness. You spend your life believing that you must get things and reach goals to find the value inside of you. But this belief causes needless suffering and limitation. It complicates your life. This misunderstanding was ingrained in you from an early age. Society has conditioned you to see your reality this way. As a result, it doesn't go away just by hearing these words. Most people misunderstand what value actually is because no one teaches them the truth about it. Your family, your culture, and society tell you what you should value. They make it seem like it's something outside of you. So you stop looking to yourself for it. Instead, you look for it externally by comparing yourself to others. You look for it in the opinions of others. You believe self-validation is out there somewhere. If only you could find it. If only you deserved it. If you were good enough, you could finally get it. You might wonder if I'm trying to talk you out of having big dreams or of pursuing goals and creating an amazing life for yourself. Not at all. You should go for what you want in life. But if you're struggling to do that, it's because you don't understand the nature of value. More specifically, you don't understand the nature of your value. You believe it's something you have to chase and wrestle to the ground. You're trying to capture it and hold on to it. You believe it's something you have to prove worthy of. Trying to prove your value and your worth can only mean one thing. You're looking in the wrong place for it. Some people do achieve big goals by chasing value externally, but you have to keep achieving to avoid feeling worthless. This leads to burnout. It leads to anxiety because you're trying to constantly outrun your fear of not mattering. If you don't achieve the goals you're chasing, like when you fail, you think it's because of your lack of worth or value. Every failure causes you to feel like you're losing your value. So you stop risking it. You stop trying. You stop pursuing what you want from life. Do you ever feel like you're just clinging to what little worth you have left sometimes? This is no way to live, even if you are successful in the eyes of others. Clients come to me who are super successful in terms of how they're perceived because of their accomplishments, but they can't understand why they feel so unhappy and so unfulfilled. Another common symptom of this is imposter syndrome. You can surround yourself with awards and accolades and evidence of your value, but if you overlook the source of that value, all of those things will feel meaningless. None of it will feel real to you if you're not connecting with the source of it. When you grasp your value and connect with it, when you stop seeking external validation to give it to you, it becomes easier to achieve what you want. It also becomes so much easier to create the fulfilling life you dream of. It becomes obvious that failure is only feedback. Failure is part of the process of succeeding. It has nothing to do with your value. When you understand this, you will no longer delude yourself into thinking that your possessions give you value. So losing them, it's not scary. When you have no fear of losing your value, you become resilient. True resilience is knowing that no matter how many times you fail or don't get what you want, you know that you truly never lose anything at all, ever. Your value is always intact. What can you do if you always know that you can't lose your value? What would you do that you're not doing right now? When it comes to achieving goals, imagine if you could fail over and over and never take it personally. Imagine never feeling like you ever lose anything. All setbacks are temporary when you connect with your value. How successful you become is determined by how much failure you're willing to endure. 
If you can fail without experiencing loss of value or worth, how would your life change right now? All that I'm saying can feel counterintuitive. At first, it's not what you're used to, but doesn't it make sense to start with connecting with your own value before pursuing goals and achievements? You can do this. Instead of desperately trying to increase your self-worth, you can start with the confidence in the value you already possess and pursue your goals from a place of curiosity about your potential. Isn't that better than trying to discipline yourself and grind it out? And you can enjoy it every step of the way. It doesn't need to be painful. You no longer have to use fear of failure to push yourself to the finish line. Now that I've given you an understanding, what now? Where do you go from here? Now it's time to fully understand it. That's your journey. Teachers and guides can only support you with good tools, which is why I teach NLP, like I said earlier. Neuro-linguistic programming has been by far the most practical approach to truly experiencing my own value. I use it every day to leverage creating the life of my dreams, and I have no doubt that it will work for anyone who's ready to embody this understanding fully. Do you wanna discover if these tools will work for you as well? If so, I've made an NLP training for you. It covers everything an NLP practitioner should know. The training is thorough and long. I spared nothing while creating it, but it's also affordable. I wanna make sure everyone has the opportunity to get this. You'll find a link to it in the description below this video. If you're still not sure about NLP or if you've heard bad things about it, then check out this next video. It explains what happened to NLP since it was developed, the good, the bad, and yes, the ugly.